In Acts chapter 13, we see the first calling to missions, and we all know it well. You, you support missionaries, and um, the first four verses, and it goes, um, well, you know the first four verses. I'm not going to read them, so that way we can save some more time. Here's uh, Barnabas and, and Saul, and uh, God separates them in verse 2. And, and as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Saul was already called to the work. He, he, he knew when he got saved, God told uh, Ananias what he was going to be doing. He had, he had it. You know, a lot of us already know what God wants. It's just doing it. Yeah. Amen. But God wants faithful people because they were faithfully working there. They were faithful, faithfully ministering to the Lord. And sometimes you, you, we, we can't all do the same thing. We can't all be in Chile. We can't all be pastors. But there's always something to do. And Chile, we're everything. We are the cooks. We are the cleaners. I, I am the electrician, the plumber. I, I, and not that I know. I've learned on the go. Uh, I'm glad I still have my hair. In fact, in Chile, they have uh, what is called on the, on the go um, hot water. You have to uh, light the match and put it in there. Well, I didn't know that. So I, I started the hot water, and I go to hot, light the match, and boom! And all this got burned. Kristen's knocking on the door. Are you okay? And she can smell the burnt hair. I'm just glad it wasn't up here. And I said, yes, yes. You learned the hard way things. Um, we're, we're, we are everything. So winning. Um, in fact, in Caleta de Tango, we used to go so much. 20,000 people. Carolina grew up in Caleta de Tango, and I knew more people than her. And she would always be surprised. And I said, door knocking, door knocking, door knocking. We're memorable. We're, we're Americans. We're memorable. They see us. They don't forget us. Um, they know us. So it's, it's being busy, uh, doing what you can and, and how you can. Sometimes we had a woman. Uh, in fact, she's still in the Caleta de Tango. She had vertigo. And so she couldn't walk, she couldn't walk from here to the door. And she, she'd be falling. She's 86. But she wanted to go out and serve and say, you know what? Thursdays is our day to go soul winning. You pray during that time. You pray during that time. There's over 30,000 Haitians now in Chile. 30,000. They're starting to come into the church now. And, you know, I, I have problems in English. I, was, I grew up in Brooklyn. You, you, you know there's problems in English. <laughs> so, so I had problems in Spanish. Now I got to learn cre uh, Creole. You know, I'm, I, you know, but God's opened the door there. They're starting to come in, Amen. Yeah. you know, and, and, and it's just being faithful, door knocking. The one man, Wesley, that uh, Mauricio went out, uh, he, he had that street and he, he led him to the Lord. He had sprung in a person, a different Haitian every week, Amen. and he just got saved. Amen. And he's been a blessing to the church and they're in Calera and, and it's just being faithful. God will use you. In fact, um, one day as we were so winning, it was a hot day. It was a day it was awful. And uh, I, I was frustrated because we were going door to door. And nobody wanted to receive a track. Everybody was saying, oh, no, okay, no, no, thank you. So I, I told her, that's it. This is the last door because I can't take it today. And I got up to the, hello. Well, in Chile, they have big dogs, and they all have gates. I told you they rob everything. If you wanted it, you had it chained up or behind your door. If you leave the bike there, it will not be there when you come out the store. You leave your purse in your car without the doors locked and, and windows shut, it will not be there. They will rob. <clears throat> Until you get to the gate, hello. That's your doorbell. <laughs> hello. They'll come out, and they'll come over there. The guy saw me, he's like, oh, and I was like, oh, that's it. Here, go ahead. <laughs> I just threw the tracks on him and I left. I, that's it, let's go home. Yes, yes, I, I, I am not the perfect one. I'm not the perfect missionary. I had to learn things too. But you know what? God taught me something there that day. It was a Saturday. I went home. I had to pray. I had to get right. I got to preach the next day. Uh, um, and <laughs> I got right. I preached and I went to church. I, I felt bad because, you know, they're not rejecting me. They were rejecting God. Yeah. And I had to learn that again. I had to learn. Um, God's going to bring in the people he wants. I was doing it in my power, my strength. Yeah. We got to go in his strength and his power. Yeah. And God taught me that clearly that day. And, and you know what? Not because of me. 
but because of God, the guy let that little girl go to church. Because of God, not because of me, because I did it wrong. I, my attitude is wrong. I wanted to serve God, but you know we ought to serve God in the right attitude too. Yes. And I was wrong. And here we see the Holy Ghost guiding and directing. And, and he leads them, and, and he brings them forth, and they, they set sail. They go to Cilicia, and uh, um, um, they're always, uh, every time he goes someplace, verse 5, and when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogue. They used God's word. They used the gospel. They didn't just use other things. They used God's word. You know, this is what changes the lives Amen. from the inside out. Um, they, they now in Chile, uh, we, we've had our kids two years in the public schools there to learn Spanish, and they've been a great asset. Um, they, learned how, they learned how to read, write, and speak it. But um, uh, their way of dealing with things was drugs. The kid was too wild, so they would send the kids to the psychiatrist so he would give them stuff, and the, the school would get extra money for that. That's how the government was paying. When you know what they needed? Jesus. That's all the person those kids needed was Jesus and a little discipline at home, too, but I won't say that. <laughs> Keep going there. <clears throat> but as you go, verse 7, um, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. Here's a guy wanting to hear the word of God. You know, there's a lot of people out here, even in this country still, that want to hear the word of God, that need salvation, that need that, that door knocked. Hello! It's what they need. It's what they truly need. The devil has blinded them. Just like, look at the next verse. But Elamas the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. There's always something to turn people away from the faith. There's always something to, to, to change, um, uh, to get your eyes off of God, but even for us to turn our, our, um, us from soul winning. There's always a stumbling block. Oh, my head hurts. Oh, t today is bad. There's always something, even in this day. You see it. I have a... a I've been in Chile seven years, and um, my father died two years ago, August 3rd. I was in Chile. It's ten and a half hours to get to, back to New York. She called. Two hours later, my sister called again. Daddy's dead. Both my mother and father, I never had time to say I love you one last time. I never had time to give him a hug again, one last hug, one last kiss. But I think about there was always something that kept my father from listening to the gospel. You know, now, right now I can only have hope that my father's in heaven. And I was serving God, and I hope that someone was faithful out in New York telling people about Jesus, because he wouldn't hear it from me. What he would tell me was, hey, those are my grandkids. Make sure you take care of them. Don't quit that job. I was a laboratory tech. I was winning very good money in New York Methodist Hospital, which they should know very well. How could you leave that job for the gospel to go to Bible school? There was always something. There was never support at home to serve God, to go home. And now I live. I always wish I could give my father one last hug and I love you and tell him the gospel one last time. There's always something keeping us. And always something keeping them too sometime. Verse 
43, it says, Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religion proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Wow, that, wouldn't that be amazing to see the whole city here? Yes. Hearing the word of God? Boy, that's amazing. But look at the next verse. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which are spoken by Paul. There's always that crowd. Yeah. That's, you know, when, when there's something good happening and you know God's working, there's always going to be opposition. Right. And there's always going to be persecution. Verse uh, um, 50. But the Jews stirred up devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. There's always going to be stuff. But it's time that we step up and be faithful too. Yes. You know, in the, in the next uh, verses, we see that Paul was stoned. They took him out of the city and they stoned him. Right. Hey, that was the time where, you know what? I think I'm going to quit now. Look at these bruises. Look at the black and blues on me. He shakes off the dust and goes back in that city. Right. <laughs> How many of us are willing to shake off the dust and go back and keep fighting, keep moving forward? A lot of times in Chile, they just want to rob you. They just want to take advantage of you. They, they always ask, why are you here? How could you leave? You're crazy. America to come here. Uh, over there, you can still put your track inside the post office, inside the mailbox. But they always have these big dogs, German Shepherd, Rottweilers, and the gate in that little hole. So when you go in, they're ready to bite your fingers off. So it's a little game you play, you know. I'm going to keep my fingers or not in. <laughs> but God, but God's been gracious too, because verse 26 of, of chapter 14. And then sailed to Antioch from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done for them, and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. You know what? We're back here for three months, and we've been able to come to churches and tell them what God has done. There's a church in Coletta de Tango that, hey, that goes to those people's accounts that helped us there. And it wasn't because we were great missionaries. We failed a lot. We, we, we had, uh, well, I'm a hard-headed person. I had on-the-job training with God and, and, and the mission field. But we were able to rejoice with the people now and let them know what God had done. Amen. And, you know, it's the same thing what God can do for you. Yeah. God can always bring the victory. God wants to use you. You know, a lot of times we, we pick what's good for us. I had a, a here... A man in, in Galera de Tango, he came to me and he said, oh, I'm going to switch jobs. This job is going to pay me a lot more and everything. I said, okay, well, tell me about it. He started telling me this and that, and wow, good, good. Then he got, the only bad part about it, I'm going to start missing two Sundays a month. Stop, it's not good for you. It's not for you. No, no, but wait, but pass the ball. No, it's not for you. Anytime you're missing church, it's not good for you. It's not the job for you. God don't want that job for you. Well, he didn't listen to me. He took the job. He still can't meet his uh, financial obligations. Everything is going worse for him at home because sometimes we pick what's good for us instead of what's the best for us, and that's God's will. Right. That's the, the safest place to be is in God's will. Amen. We, we, uh, we like uh, American food. We, in fact, we, we've been... And what we ate today, I, I gained weight. I, I've been here only two months, and I've already gained weight. And I'm just eating like crazy. But you get there, the food is bland. And it's the same food a lot of times, just made differently. The people are always trying to jip you. I go to the store, to the fresh market. I can't close my hand until I count because they're always trying to shortchange. They, they'll shortchange an American first. 
In fact, they, the man told me once, we'll rob you first because you can call America and you can get everything replaced anyway. I said, what do you think we are? I've seen the movies. All you guys have big houses, two or three cars, hundreds of acres. I was like, that's not true. That's the movies. Are you crazy? <laughs> but that's their thought. During our time there, we had a, a girl who went through so much um, bullying that she wouldn't even leave. But she, she lived right next to the church. And uh, her grandfather was there always. He kept calling me over. He wanted to hear. He, his wife was Catholic. He wasn't Catholic anymore. He'd tell me that when she wasn't around. <laughs> but but he, he, he always had me talk to his little girl. So I kept talking to her, inviting her to kids club. She wouldn't even go outside anymore. She dropped out of school because the bullying was so bad. Finally, we got her into kids club. We got her back in school. And uh, just uh, last month, she got saved. It was God. Amen. Uh, yeah. It was God. And to see her change. And, and her friend, Yaritza, the one you saw up there, she invited her. No, her parents wouldn't go. She went by herself all, that, all those years. And she just got baptized just two months ago. God. Uh, God can do great things through you. Um, nothing special but I want God to use me. You know, I'm just going to put a little thought in there. In uh, Revelations 3, 16, God says, um, cold or warm, cold or hot, be either cold or hot. And in fact, I, I'm going to illustrate it. Can, can I get... Can, there's the cross. Come, 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 buddy. All right, this is the cross. This is here where we're at right now. You take, uh, go walk up to there. You walk four steps back. When we're not being used by God, when we're just staying the same, just, hey, I go to church Sunday mornings, I, we just stay right here. We're staying warm. Yes. We're warm now. But he's been going to church. He's been reading his Bible. He's been using God. He's closer. Mm -hmm. He's getting hot. This one's falling back. Sorry, buddy. You're getting cold. <laughs> That's just an example. You know, when we don't let God use us, when we don't start growing, when we don't start keep reading our Bibles, doing the God's command for us, and that's going out to soul winning. That means our, our friends at school. Thank you. I'm sorry. That means our, our friends at, at, at work, our neighbors. I believe one day we're going to be right there, and they're going to look at us. You never told me. And they're going to head off to eternity. And I don't want their bloods in my hand, whether they're from Chile or here. Mm -hmm. I want to be used by God, just like Paul, and we can.